Hey friends, just wanted to uh, take this opportunity to uh, put out a, some thoughts, uh, maybe some of the things that have been on my heart uh, as far as this current season, this very unusual and unique season uh, where coronavirus is affecting so many nations on the planet, uh, including where my wife and my twins and I live in Norway, and uh, we're in the midst of a crazy, crazy time and uh, it's hard to make sense of a lot of what's happening, but uh, I've been just taking time to think, uh, be with the Lord, pray, read the Bible, uh, just make sense uh, of what's going on and listening to others as well. You know, I've been really doing my best to listen to what others are, are feeling and sensing and, and what they believe God is saying and doing in the midst of it all. And uh, I just want to share some of my thoughts today. Uh, I won't go for too long, and I'm certainly no expert and don't claim to have the voice and the actual word of the Lord, uh, but these are some of the things I'm sensing uh, that I feel that God is saying and doing in the earth right now. And uh, I think it's really a time uh, where we, uh, as humanity, uh, are doing what it talks about in the book of Hosea, where it's a time for us to fear the Lord and His goodness. It's a time for us to fear the Lord and His goodness. There is no doubt that the Lord's goodness is on display in the earth right now. Not in the virus, but outside of the virus. The, the Lord's goodness is on display in the earth. There is just unbelievably good things happening in the earth right now. Uh, we've got uh, unbelievable numbers of uh, people coming to know Jesus in different nations of the earth. There are so many people coming to know Jesus in nations of the earth. Even Islamic nations or uh, declared atheist nations, the, the, the church that maybe is seen or hidden is just growing and growing. And we're even seeing just in certain nations, uh, stadiums filled with people which is uh, experiencing God and coming to know Jesus as Lord, King, Savior, and friend. And uh, there's just incredibly good things happening. Uh, we see uh, churches are just, I, I visit churches in different places, and there are just churches in different nations that are just thriving. And uh, people in the church just coming together, loving one another, coming together in unity. And so there's a lot of good things to be rejoicing over in the earth right now. Uh, but at the same time, uh, and, that, and this is the Lord's goodness on display. But at the same time, we're also seeing uh, that I believe it's a time for us to fear the Lord. It's a time for us to remember that God is God. You know, we for so long, uh, you know, at least in my lifetime now, how in many of the nations of the West, we've worked to push out God. We've worked to push God out of the government. We've worked to push God out of uh, society, out of schools, uh, out of workplaces. Uh, we've worked to push God out in society and now's the time for us to actually realize hang on secularism is failing hang on secularism is not working out so well and actually we need to turn back to God secularism has led us to nihilism it's led us to the a, a sense of where's the meaning of life and uh, it's now a time to fear the Lord in society and uh, I think the common question that many people are asking right now uh, Christians and non-Christians believers non-believers all kinds of people they're asking this question. In the midst of coronavirus, they're saying, what's causing this? Why is God allowing this? Where is this coming from? Is God just permitting this to happen? And and these are all really natural questions. You know, these are questions that we uh, have been asking over centuries and centuries as mankind. We've been asking these questions. What's going on with this? Um, the reality is, is we don't know. And uh, we don't know who's behind this. We don't know what exactly is behind this. Anyone that claims to, I know exactly what's behind this, I, I, I believe we have reason to question. And uh, the reality is, is that we don't know what's behind the coronavirus. We don't know what exactly is causing it, uh, you know, in terms of the physical and the metaphysical, actually. And uh, could it be God uh, pouring out judgment on the nations? Yeah, absolutely. That's possible. It could be God's judgment. As I said, we uh, certainly in the West and, and, and in where I spend most of my time, but even in other nations outside of the West, uh, there's been such a concerted effort to just 
uh, to push God out of society, to push God out of even families and schools and and uh, workplaces. It is such a such a, a, a an effort to push God out. There's been so there's feels like there's an unbelievable amount of idolatry that that goes on in, 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 in especially the West, but in other nations as well right now. And uh, is it is it God's judgment to to uh, bring people to Himself? Yeah, it could be. But could it also be Satan? A hundred percent. It could be Satan. Uh, we know that Satan pours out sickness uh, in the earth, and uh, we know that God that Satan afflicts people with sickness. Uh, there's no question over that, and that's a that's an evil work of the enemy, and uh, Satan afflicting people with sickness. And so, really, it could be Satan, and 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 therefore something to just resist and 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 cry out to God for an end. Uh, but also, it could be. Uh, the the sin of man, the sin of humanity affecting the planet. Uh, that's something that we need to consider as well. Uh, it talks about in the book of Hosea, in uh, I believe it's chapter 3, uh, it talks about in Hosea how uh, the prophet's saying that there's been wickedness in the land, that there's no truth, there's no mercy, there's no knowledge of God, there's stealing, there's violence. And then it says in chapter 3, and the land is mourning. That's a crazy statement. In other words, what that's saying is, is that because of the weight of man's sin, its idolatry, its rebellion against God, the land itself is mourning. The earth is mourning. The earth is under the strain of man abdicating its moral virtues, abdicating its responsibility to be stewards of the planet, to reveal God in the earth, to steward creation, uh, to be... Uh, uh, a priesthood unto God on the earth, man abdicating that responsibility is literally affecting the planet and the planet is responding. And that is 100% what could be going on, uh, that the sin of man is affecting the planet and consequently we have unusual, unwanted, adverse impacts and circumstances like the coronavirus. So that's something for us to consider. Is, is the earth mourning over our abdication of our moral responsibility and our stewardship and our, our priesthood under God and instead turning to idolatry? The land may be mourning and this is a consequence of that. So these are things to consider. We don't know. We don't know where this is coming from or the purpose or the cause or origin. We don't know for certain. But these are things I think we should consider. Uh, I want to say I believe that <clears throat> Jesus Christ at the cross he disarmed principalities and powers. That's what the New Testament tells us, that Jesus Christ at the cross disarmed principalities and powers. He made a public spectacle of them. And what that means is he curbed the powers of death and hell at the cross and then won a victory over them. Now, does that mean that the, uh, the enemy has no power in the earth, that there's no evil, that there's no um, you know, evil and bad that happens in the earth? No, that's not what that means. But what it means is, is that if we turn to the cross of Jesus Christ, if we come to the cross, to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, there is a promise of victory over every evil thing, over every form of death, over every wretched thing that is not of, that is uh, not of the kingdom of God there is a promise through the victory of the cross there is a promise for complete freedom for complete prosperity for complete well-being for complete um, wholeness in every area of our life there is that promise and that promise stands and so even in the midst of a massive uh, you know, plague, a massive virus, we can know that there is the promise through the victory of the cross, the promise of well-being, prosperity, of wholeness and, and, and goodness for us. If we come to Jesus, if we come through the cross, if we come through the resurrection, dedicating our lives to the Lord Jesus, entrusting our lives to the Lord Jesus, submitting ourselves before him and his lordship, there is the promise of that victory being appropriated in our lives. And that promise is for anyone who calls on the name of the Lord Jesus.
I believe this is really a time for us to get right with God. Uh, this is a time for us to examine our lives. It's a time for us to examine our relationship with God, to examine the way that we're living our lives. Uh, you know, the, it, it actually talks about in um, the book of Revelation, the final book of the Bible, it talks about how uh, in a certain group of churches, uh, of a, in churches of a region, there was such idolatry and immorality that uh, there was um, the God uh, actually judged those those churches, uh, the, sorry, judge some of the followers, quote unquote, followers, uh, or sorry, servants of Jesus in those churches. God actually judged them, and uh, what Jesus judged them, and then and then it goes on to say, so that all the churches shall know that I am He who searches the minds and hearts. So let me explain that better. Jesus in in Revelation uh, actually pours out judgment. On uh, a group of uh, followers or, or quote unquote servants of God uh, in Thyatira, and actually pours out it pours out his judgment on them, and and then it and then it goes on to say Jesus says in Revelation so that all the churches shall know that I am He who searches the minds and hearts. In other words, God pours out judgment on this group of persons, but it was actually meant to cause all the churches to know that he is the one who searches the minds and hearts. In other words, I might not be under you know, the judgment or the discipline of God, but I am nonetheless supposed to have a response of searching my own mind and heart as to how I'm living, how the decisions I'm making in my life, the way in which I'm living my life. I am supposed to examine my own heart and mind. Even though it, things may not be directly affecting me, even though I'm, I may not have a virus, even though I may not be sick or, or under great oppression or persecution or suffering at this point, I am still to re examine my own heart and mind as to what is going on right now in my life. How am I living? Am I loving the Lord God with all my heart? Does He have first place in my life? Am I loving people? Am I absolutely serving and loving people? Am I making a difference in the earth for the for the poor, for the oppressed, for those who have not heard the gospel? Am I advancing the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ? Am I living my life in such a way worthy of the calling that God has given me? It's called, it should cause me and cause all of us to examine our hearts and minds. I believe it's a time for us to refine our focus. We need to examine what are we focusing on right now? What's our focus? It's so easy to be distracted. Uh, I think, again, my context is the West. I live in Norway. I, I, the countries I visit tend to mostly be in, in, in the West. You know, we can be so distracted in the West. We have unprecedented prosperity and comfort. We have unprecedented prosperity and comfort. And I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, uh, I'm not like rejecting that. I'm not saying get away from me, prosperity and comfort, but we can be so distracted in the midst of that. And I believe this is a time for us to examine our priorities. What are we supposed to be prioritizing? You see, what's happening is a lot of things are being stripped away. Entertainment's being stripped away. Work is being stripped away. Uh, sport even's being stripped away, like, you know, major football competitions. Even the Olympics is has been postponed. Uh, you know, it, all these things are being stripped away and it's a time I believe for us to refine our focus what are we focused on what are we de dedicating ourselves to to whom and what are we devoted that's a key question to whom and what are we devoted are we loving God well are we loving our family well are we loving our community well are we loving those that don't know Jesus well I believe these are things that we need to examine right now we have time and, and even space it seems to examine these things I want to finish with this thought hey no matter what is happening in the earth, we have hope. We have joy. Those who are in Jesus Christ have hope and joy. And the reason for that is because Jesus is still King. Jesus is still Lord. Jesus is on the throne, seated at the right hand of the Father, on the throne of majesty. He is a, he is a God of mercy and justice. He is not sitting back idly. He is not distant from this crisis. God is not 
ignorant or ignoring or standing back or distant from what's going on in our personal lives and from this world crisis. He is King and He is Lord and He is eagerly listening to the cries of our of our, our hearts and minds and our voices he's eagerly listening and i believe now is the hour for us to call upon jesus christ and say god have mercy we need you god we we choose right now to pray and 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 call upon you for mercy for justice for an end to the evil and the suffering that's going on in the earth we call upon you lord jesus to end this suffering we know that you're the only answer medicine can't answer it power can't answer it science seems to not be able to answer it right now these 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 uh, things of the earth the human matter cannot answer it reasoning cannot answer it but God you can answer it we call upon you however you choose to end this suffering this pain this awful crisis however you choose to end it Lord end it in Jesus name and how shall I partner with you how shall I be a partner Part of you answering it in the earth right now how shall I be a part of you answering this crisis what are you calling me to do who are you calling me to take a meal to who are you calling me to bring groceries to who are you calling me to pray for their uh, health because they're sick who are you calling me to share the gospel with the good news of Jesus Christ with who are you calling me to speak with who are you calling me to embrace uh, in, in, in a you know in a um, in, in, as an illustration <laughs> Let's keep the social distancing. But who are you calling me to embrace with my affections? And, and let's be not just a, a praying people, but let's be a doing people. Let's be looking at what the Bible says. Let's then be doing what the Bible says. Let's reflect the love of God, the mercy of God, the justice of God, the, uh, the coming and caring for the oppressed, that part of God's nature. Let's reflect that in the earth. Jesus is King. He's the answer. The victory was won at the cross. Let's pray according to the victory of the cross and let's act according to the victory of the cross. God bless you. May God bless you with hope, peace, prosperity, health and well-being in your life. Stay encouraged. Stay full of courage because God is in charge and this pain, this pain and season of crisis will end and Jesus will be the one that ends it because he is the God of mercy and justice. He's bringing it to an end now and we're learning to partner with him in this day. I hope you have a great day. May God take you into unprecedented health, blessing and prosperity in your life in this time, I pray. God bless you in Jesus' name.